Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, in this uh, short video I'm going to look at a question I'm asked quite often concerned with printing and that is how can I match my prints to the screen? Well, I'm going to say you can't and I want to talk a bit about um, a lot of the misinformation and arrant nonsense that's talked about soft proofing and things like that as a wonder solution to make sure that your prints match your screen. Why is it a nonsense? Well, the, the basics of it, this screen here um, is emitting light, uh, video is picking it up. I've got lights around the room, light is being absorbed and reflected by these prints, sorted test prints from, and there are hundreds of them here that I've, uh, I've produced during sort of profiling and testing printers. And that light is being re-emitted and that's being seen by the camera. The same way that my eyes are seeing light emitted from this, light reflected off there. And that's what produces. The two things are fundamentally different and you cannot actually match the two. Now, that's nowhere near as bad a problem as people think. Because people say, well, if I can never match my screen to the prints, how am I going to get accurate prints? Well, there's a whole load of things tied up in that. And one of the points I want to make is that you have to accept the difference between prints and screen. And that, when you do that and understand how it works, adds potentially a whole new dimension to your printing. It means that when you produce a print, no matter what it is, and these, say, these are all test images and things that I've, I've got. The, the test images are available for download from the Northlight Images website. But these images here, I can look at these, I can appreciate the differences in them. It is the differences between them that actually let me choose papers, let me decide how my prints want to look. This is an intermediate stage. This is no more than a step on the way to producing prints. Now, if I'm producing images that are going to be displayed on screens, then it's a bit more than an intermediate step. But if I'm doing prints, this is just a partway step. I shouldn't expect this to look necessarily like this. In a way, saying the screen looks great, but the prints look off in some way, is a bit like saying, Look at these negatives I've developed. They're superb. The prints look rubbish, but look at the negatives. People don't care about the negatives. It's the prints that count. Right. What about soft proofing? It's widely touted as the way to get better looking prints. Well, there's a whole lot of different ways of doing soft proofing. There is the sort of click the soft proofing button in whatever software you're using, look at it on screen and say, well, that's how the print's going to look. That does not work. It doesn't stop a lot of people using it as a bit of a crutch to avoid thinking about how their prints look and to try and automate. I shouldn't have to worry about all of this stuff. I should just be able to print, press print and out comes a perfect print. Yeah. Um, not in any world I foresee in the near future. Well, who knows, maybe one day it, printing will get even easier. But at the moment, if you want to make great looking prints, you have to put some effort into it. Now, soft proofing done correctly can be very good. However, to do it correctly, you need to pay careful attention to how you set it up. First of all, your monitor needs to be good enough and needs to be profiled and calibrated and set up to match the print in some way. Then your prints, you need to look at them in consistent lighting. You need consistent lighting of a particular brightness, of a particular type of lighting. So some people may well use uh, viewing cabinets. I have a, a, a viewing stand that I use occasionally with special lights in that you know, I don't use it nearly as often as I thought I would when I first got it. Um, I've realized that I need it for some color critical work, but most of the time experience trumps it. 
and relying on test images and how things look when you actually print them. So yes, soft proofing can work, but as I say, it needs setting up. Uh, it covers all kinds of things. Like, like it's not just the brightness you're viewing the prints. It's the type of light you're using. Uh, it's how, what settings you've got here. Now, this particular monitor, I've calibrated this to an, a really low color temperature of 4000 K. Now that is phenomenally low. You would not normally edit using this. And in fact, if I'm using this, was to use this screen for normal editing, it would seem, feel very yellow and just look wrong. However, this screen is set up to match the lighting I've got here. Now I've got some LED bulbs on some uh, up on the bookshelves at the top here, lighting down. I've got the Siri uh, uh, cob light that I reviewed a while ago. I've got that there with a soft box in that direction. That's set to 4000K. This is set to 4000K. These lights are somewhere around 4000. So I'm working in an environment here where all the lighting has been set actually to make it easier to record on video. And that's why hopefully uh, this image on the screen actually looks fairly similar to many of the prints I've got here. Um, I've set that up. In a way, that's the approach. You have to go to that much trouble to get soft proofing to work. As I say, a lot of people just see soft proofing, they hear soft proofing as the way to sort, they just click the soft proofing button, look at it, make some adjustments, and then sometimes the prints work, sometimes they don't work, and that's the problem. There's one other element about soft proofing, uh, and that is the soft proofing industry. Uh, this is all the experts selling courses, teaching you how to use Lightroom and various other things who all go soft proofing. Yes, that's the way to get better quality printing. Um, at one level, yes, it may be, but it's easy to teach. Um, it is much easier to teach pressing a button on an interface than to try and teach people to actually really look at prints. Look at how prints differ. Look at how they're similar. All the different papers. There must be 20 different papers here. These are all my profiling sheets from the testing. And as I say, there are hundreds of sheets here. And I do this quite a lot when I'm testing printers. And it gives me a feel for how printers work. Um, and let's say, Always beware when somebody says soft proofing is the way to go forward, whether they actually know what they're talking about. Um, I just say that as a warning. Properly done, soft proofing can be very helpful and I use it myself on occasions. When I've got tricky colors where I'm not sure how the color's gonna be reproduced, of course, it does depend on the capabilities of the screen. So this, this BenQ screen here is a fairly high-end screen. It's almost Adobe 98 color space. So sure, this can display lots of colors, but I have other images such as this one here. Uh, this is taken at night, colors here. Um, the colors in this image are very near to the maximum gamut of many printers. So I can print that image on different printers and it shows differences in color gamma in a way that I would simply never ever see on the screen. And remember that your printers can print colors that you can't display on the monitor. And you can display colors on the monitor which you can't ever print. So I can display really bright light yellows and there is no way I can print those accurately because I won't get the color. Light saturated colors, great on a screen, you can't print them. Now, some, some media can manage that better than others. So perhaps a glossy media. Uh, some of the uh, metallic papers can give a real glow to them and almost look like you're printing on transparencies. So how about different papers? Well, first of all, you look at this test image. And one of the big fallacies that people think about printer profiling and color management in general is that it makes your prints look like your screen. Well, they can't. I can make a perfect print on different papers and it's a perfectly produced print. The colors are as accurate as I could get and they will look different. Why will they look different? Color management is not about making things look the same. 
I've got two prints here. Uh, this is one of my test images done for printing onto cards. This one is on a thickish rag paper, a thin card. It's a matte finish. This one I can see from the notes on it. This was printed with Canon Pro 200 and it's a semi-gloss paper. Now the contrast and if you can see it on the video then I'll be surprised but it's quite clear in, in looking at it. These images look different. This one on the shinier paper has more depth, the colours are deeper, the colours are stronger, the blacks are slightly blacker. On this one there's less tonal range so the contrast is not so high. Is one of these right? One wrong? No, of course not. They are different versions of the same image. And when you think that you know, profiling and using ICC profiles when you print is about making things come out the same, it is not about making things come out the same because otherwise why would you use different papers? So I've got lots of different examples here. So here we have on a, this is on, I would say a Barita style paper. And uh, this one here, and uh, this one is on a heavy art paper. Now this one's got some really nice rich blacks in it. They have a different look to the blacks on here. They're both black. They're both, there's no significant colour in them, but they look different. And it's understanding that difference between how the prints look, which is the important bit. And when you have a feel for this, and I say don't, rush out when you get a new printer and buy loads and loads of papers of test packs because you won't have the experience to appreciate the differences between them. So I look at different ones. This is a semi-gloss paper. It looks like an ordinary photo print, but I've got another one here that's on an ultra high gloss paper. And it's subjectively, and if I was to measure it, I could see, find the difference. It looks different. So. Embrace the differences. Use test images. Use soft proofing to get a vague idea that the colours you're going to print are going to work. Even that has its limitations. Photoshop, for example, the gamut warning tool hasn't been updated for years that I know of and it's a very blunt tool for looking at it. But appreciate the differences. Look at, think of this as the starting point and you are going to produce a version of this as your print. What you choose paper wires, what you choose profile wires, editing, various other things, they all make a difference, but they are different. So the same image here, perfect reproductions of it on different papers look different. It's not about making things look the same, but say, look carefully at the test images and that's where your experience will come. Then when you understand that and you appreciate it, and you don't have to print these on huge, great sheets of paper. You know, a few A4 sheets will do and uh, just look carefully at them. Get a, get a hand lens out and actually look at the details of the pictures there. Get to understand what it is the differences because those differences are what you emphasize and you choose in your creative input when you are making a print. There are some things that you simply can't show in soft proofing, no matter how well you set it up. Um, I've got a paper here. And this has a gentle surface texture. You know, there's no way you'll see it, uh, see it on the video here, but I can see it quite clearly. I can feel it. It's a particular texture. Likewise, this is a very smooth paper. The impact of the paper should not be underestimated. So there you go. That is my general approach to soft proofing. And the key thing to remember is the screen is not the print. Use test images, learn to understand and embrace the differences you get with all the different papers you've got available and use colour management to help you get things right first time. Colour management is not about some spurious idea of perfection. Anyway, I hope that's of use. If you've got any questions, please do ask. Oh, and subscribe to the channel, it's always appreciated. But um, I've got lots of stuff like this. So if you've got any questions, as I say, just please ask. And thanks for watching.